These days, when you look out across the world and you read the news, there are about a thousand reasons for people to have angst, anxiety, and worry. However, I would like to remember to always have a sense of humility and a sense of gratitude for my audience. Thank you, everyone who is here at the Florida Maquis YouTube channel, those of you who have showed up over at the Patreon channel, especially the support over there has been absolutely amazing. I shared this particular piece of information with that audience yesterday. If growth rates continue for the next six months the way they have the past six months, it's very likely that the beginning of 2023, Lord willing, if there is still the internet and still the ability to communicate this way, we will likely be able to shift over instead of doing daily videos here and weekly videos there, we'll be able to do it the other way around. And that's all because of you guys. So I just wanted to share that and say thank you so much to everyone. It's why I have kept it at the lowest allowable possible level of one US dollar per month. If you want to sign up monthly, if you sign up annually, you get a 10% break. So it's only like 90 cents per month. Partnering with Vimeo, we have a four-part series talking about survival as regards women. We are two videos into our new series talking about survival as it regards men, but there are also videos that go back for months and months and months, even years. There's well over 100 videos there, and you get all of that for $1 per month and fully refundable. Even in 90 days, if something catastrophic financially happens and you need that money refunded, absolutely no question. So would love to have you over there. One of the things that we talk about is how so many people over the last 20, 25 years have done a really good job of preparing all sorts of things, beans, bolts, band-aids, every possible aspect of what you might not be able to get during a grid down, shit hits the fan, end of the world as we know it situation. But one of the areas I truly believe has been neglected is the area of psychology and the mind and understanding what happens to people. And one of the events that I don't think a lot of people are predicting, back in 2018 and 19, I talked about this. I asked the question, what happens if the grid goes down and they just let out all of these prisoners? Now, some people said, oh, they're going to gas them and all this is a bunch of ridiculous nonsense. Well, here we are four years later, and we are seeing that this is exactly what they're doing. As the grid, everything starts to fail, the economic collapse, they are starting to release. And here's this article from not very long ago. When was this? Oh, 28 June, 2022. 70% of detainees at Rikers can be, quote unquote, safely released, according to advocates. That's what they're pushing for. And this is going to cause an unintended effect because it's going to mix with other things that are going on. It's not going to happen in a vacuum. There's something that has always existed between men and women that science still cannot figure out. Even the most sophisticated, pardon me, sophisticated AI computers cannot figure this out. That's why I said this is going to be a war of the mind. And people are going to need to maintain a command of their own psychology. Let me ask you a question. If you could take every worker in North America, blue collar, and replace them with someone who had a 100% better attitude about their job, would you do that? If you were a government official and you could get rid of anybody asking for raises, you could get rid of anybody asking for better working conditions. And you could just magically snap your fingers and replace them with people that would work for 25% less and would just be happy to have the job. Just be happy to be free. Just be happy that they weren't incarcerated. And they would do anything. If this is what it takes, sure, I'll be a handyman, I'll paint walls, I'll hammer on roofs, I'll fix plumbing, absolutely. What a wonderful day that would be, that I could wake up maybe on maybe on Sundays and go to, go to church and wear a button-down shirt, or even maybe during the week just to go to dinner. 
Imagine that. Imagine not being in prison. Anything other than being in prison. I don't care what the I don't care what the stipulations are. If it gets me out of these walls, I agree. If I never have to come back here again, I agree. No questions asked. That's what virtually 100% of these guys would say. I'm thankful that I woke up on a mattress in an air-conditioned room, quiet with a fan going in. I even had somebody next to me. For most prisoners right now that have been in 10, 15, 20 years, they don't even allow themselves to dream of it. It's too difficult. We talk about this in a little bit more detail over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel and how this particular attitude of gratitude might have some unattended effects. You see, the idea here, the subtext, is chemistry. This is the thing that AI can't figure out. AI, deep machine learning, cannot explain what happens when two people, randomly chosen for whatever reason, end up in proximity to each other. And for some reason, the universe aligns in a way that they just cannot, well, I'll just say it, keep their hands off each other. And when they're apart, it's like they're going through withdrawal. I know a lot of people out there know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've experienced it. Maybe you've had that moment with somebody that was inexplicable. And when you told your friends about it, they go, who? You and that person? What, really? It's inexplicable. They can't figure it out. They can't duplicate it. They have tried, actors and actresses have tried to portray this, but when you see it on the big screen, you know immediately when they're faking. I pulled these images from a series called Prison Break, and this is basically the story of um, a nurse in a prison and a guy breaking out, and I think it's a great study because these are five different images where you can see that there's absolutely no chemistry between them they're trying to fake it very well but you can tell by looking and body language and the angle of the head and that they're both really good actors and actresses and you know they're playing the parts well but there's no real actual chemistry between these two people now i would like to share something with you from years ago in years ago you see, when two people have that thing going on, it's addictive. They've got to have it. Once they've had it, there's nothing like it. They can boil down the chemicals to dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. But the reason two random people cause this physiological response in each other, they still don't get it. They can't reproduce it. You can, you can take the best looking guy and the best looking girl, you know, and put them in a room together and maybe they will have chemistry and maybe they won't. And sometimes there are two people that to everyone else seem normal or average and they've just got the case of it for each other. And I know you know what I'm talking about. But with grid down, power down, internet down, all these images that we've been using as poor replacements for dopamine responses, you know that little thing you have in your hand, the little black mirror? When all that goes away, there's going to be a shortage of dopamine, a shortage of serotonin and endorphins and oxytocin. And people are going to be screaming for it. Now, if you would like to see a real example that was not intended of actual on-stage chemistry. This goes back a long time. And you'd have to be somewhat of a sci-fi geek to even know what this is. There was a series called Farscape. And it was kind of campy and it had some Muppets a long time ago. I believe this is the 90s. 
when this was on. And there was two individuals that were cast. Ben Browder on the left. Some of you might recognize him from Stargate. And, once again, Claudia Black. Before their time in Stargate, they were in Farscape. And they had a romantic interest in that series. And almost immediately, almost immediately, everybody began noticing that there was real chemistry between these two people. Nobody was that good of an actor. Nobody was that good of an actress. And if you would like to see a complete breakdown of this, there was a guy that put this all together in a video behind the song from Restless Heart, I'll Still Be Loving You. Four minutes and 19 seconds. I will leave this in the first pinned comment. Go watch this video. And it breaks down 30 or 40 scenes from Farscape. And I believe there's actually a couple in here from Stargate too between these two characters. There was an undeniable fire between these two in real life. Now, they were married to other people and that made things a little bit uncomfortable because they were not faking it. There was just something about it and this, I'm sorry that some of these images are blurry but this is really old. This is, this is, I think this is late 90s. Maybe maybe mid to late 90s. Now, here's the proof of it. It was so intense and it was so undeniable from the seasons of Farscape that they brought the two characters and introduced them at different points in the Stargate series. And they had them encounter each other. And they were trying to make it be as if this particular character, Claudia Black, was romantically interested in this one over here, the Daniel Jackson character. And he, the guy that had this unbelievable chemistry with her, was supposed to, in this series, dislike her intensely. Now, the what happened here was, now I'm, just, I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh boy, you know what's going to happen, right? The more he tried to play that role, the more intense the chemistry got. And it, it really, it soured the whole thing. Because nobody was buying this fake romantic interest. It was one of the few moments that I've ever seen on stage where you could really tell they weren't faking it. And even in when they weren't on stage and they were doing panels and discussions and Comic-Con, you could see it. He couldn't hide it. He tried, but he could not hide it. Now, and this, this was another image that people captured of her uh, with a little bit of a thirsty look when the entire scene didn't call for any level of intimacy or attraction or interaction even really between these two characters and they caught this screen image so now once again they were married to other people so they had to stop appearing together and when they did they had to appear like this because it was causing issues but it led me down another road when i remembered this yesterday's video talked about um, a recent video put out by the Patriot Nurse where she talked about um, it was somewhat of a departure from a lot of the things that she talks about. She talked about psychology and she said after Roe v. Wade, are women just in incubators? And she relates a story where, um, or a paradigm maybe is a better uh, way to describe this, where a woman is being pursued by a man for a more intense um, physical relationship, holding out the promise of something better that she wants. If the relationship, and this is my advice to guys out there, is has re reached that level of transaction, so to speak, let her go. Because the reason this is relatable to me is that if she doesn't want to be with you that way as much as you want to be with her that way, let her go. Wait for this. I wouldn't personally want to be with a woman I had to pursue that way. I would never want to. 
If it didn't happen naturally and organically, and if there wasn't an equal level of desire on both parts, let her go. If this, if, if you do this and she, and she recoils, take her home. Code of chivalry. Be a knight. Apologize. Take her home. And wish her luck. And have her, you know, and say, I hope you find somebody that you're attracted to that way. This way. The Ben Browder and Claudia Black way. Because it is, uh, watch Farscape and tell me it's just me. Well, it's not just me. It's me and about 25 million other fans around the world. There's Reddit forums about this. What happened between Ben Browder and Claudia Black. So, anyway chemistry is going to be something that it's going to be hard to prep for and against. Because like I said, there is something about it when, when two people find that moment, find that magical thing that they're not expecting. You might as well just go uh, sit on the couch and pop some popcorn and watch the fireworks. Because there's not much you're going to do about it. And that's coming. That's coming. You've got to be in the right place in your mind for that to happen. So I'll leave it there. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.